Okay, I'm going to start this out with uh, this wiring diagram section, starting it out by showing symbols and stuff and giving a brief explanation of what we're looking at and how you can read this. Um, all the diagrams are going to have some kind of titling on them. In this case, at the bottom of the page, it says Komatsu, that PC50UU-1 is a model that was not normally sold in the United States. It's known as a gray market machine. Over to the right of that you'll see where it says 10-35. That'll be a page number in a service manual. If we go to the top of the page here it's which shows that this is an electrical circuit and then it says serial number 10012 which those would be uh, serial numbers of machines that this particular diagram describes. Now I want to look over here if you notice that everything is labeled so the components are, are labeled in such a way that you can understand or you can figure out what they mean. So I like to start here on the system we have uh, items here that look like uh, wires going down to something with little lines in it. That generally means it's a ground. And we have a battery here and it describes a battery as 12 volt and 70 AH which means amp hours. And we have a plus on one side and a minus on the other side. So that would indicate that this is a negative ground system. They have a, a, a line and it has a designation on the top of it. it says 40B as in boy. That 40 is generally a description of the size of that cable and B generally means that uh, that's the color of that cable, the color of the insulation. If we follow that up that goes to B here on this particular component which here it says it's a starting motor says 12 volt 2.5 kW or kilowatts. That's the size of the starting motor and the, and the power it generates. This item here, these lines all represent wires and like I said before this 5B is generally the size of the wire and the color of the insulation. Now these colors can be B as in black, W is in white, um, Y is in yellow, and then if there's a second letter off of it, that'll generally mean there's a stripe of some kind or some other marking on the wire that'll let you know that identify it. These items here are harness connectors. So it's labeled one, two, and three. Those are stand for pin numbers. So there's three pins in this harness connector. And one side's male and one side's female. Doesn't really say which, doesn't matter at this point. We follow these wires out again. We come up here 5B, so 5 size of wire B being black insulation goes to another component. This shows it's a 12 volt 20 amp and it states that it's an alternator. Again, we have harness connectors again. It makes it really convenient to work on machines. We can look over here, we have some items. It says electric air intake heater. That means that should it be cold out, uh, this particular component is a grid heater. So it's got bars in there. When you put amperage through them, they will heat up and glow. And then they have, again, a negative ground system, which grounds back to the engine, which grounds back to the frame. We have an oil pressure switch here. Uh, it says it's, if there's no pressure, it's grounded which allows current to go through it. That's probably there to light a light bulb to tell you that it's uh, that there's no oil pressure. And then up here we have a sending unit. Generally these are resistance units. They allow a certain amount of current going through it depending on a pressure or a um, temperature. Over here again we'll come back over to this side. We have uh, another harness connector with six individual pins. These will tell us which wires go into each pin and you can see in the color codes on each wire you can relate that to the pin number. On 
your service manuals will list out those particular harness connectors and then it'll tell you the configuration so you know which pin is number one which is number two three four five and six and so on if we look on top here we have a fuse panel if we follow that back the wire is a two it says uh, Y that would be white with a yellow stripe and it goes over here to the starting switch so it's, this fuse panel says there are four fuse, and it says all four fuses should be 20 amps. And we come down to the switches here, and I like to go to the starting switch. Uh, this this is a the representation of it, and it doesn't really tell you how it works, but they provided that here at the bottom of the page. So this is looking straight down at the key. If you were to turn it to the left, it would go to the heat situation which would make these electric grid heaters get hot. And it would tell you down here that that key is an automatic return. So if we let go of that key, that switch, that key switch will go back to the off position. We have the same thing here. We go to on and the key will stay to on. If we turn it all the way to start, it'll auto, auto return to the on position. Next to that, we have a pictorial representation of how that switch works. So if we're in the off position, there's no contact being made across this bar. If we turn it to the heat position, which would be turn this over to here, then it would the heat position would be connecting with the BR and the R1 terminal and the ACC terminal. If we turn it to the on position, then it'll be connected to B, BR, and accessory, or ACC. And if we turn it to the start position, it will be to B, BR, R2, C, and ACC. If we look at the start switch up here, it tells us which wires are which. So B, of course, being battery. And if we look down here, they'll go around it, and it says C. And if we come down to here, C is only connected when it's in start. If we follow this wire up all the way down and around, there's a harness connector. Comes through that harness connector, down, and then it goes into the C terminal on the starter. So that tells you that's going to make that starter turn or energize that solenoid. Coming back around, we have ACC. And so in all three positions here, that ACC comes on. So it's telling us we're powering up most of everything in the machine. And if we follow that, it'll go over here and it actually powers that fuse panel. And it powers it two ways. One, number one, it goes to these three fuses, but then there's also a connection underneath, which goes to a separate fuse. That separate fuse comes over here and goes to the alternator. So as you see, that's fairly straightforward. It tells you how to do it and it makes it easy for you to troubleshoot. Now we have another switch over here. It says it's a light switch and it has the same kind of representation on it. So when the switch is in the off position, it doesn't connect with anything else. When it's in the first position or one position here, it connects the power side over to this L cable. If we follow that L cable out, that wire goes up over here, up, and then it goes in and powers these dash panel lights. And then if we got in position two, this one, we can follow it down. It goes down over here and then over to this boom lamp. So that's a fairly simple system. Now, this is analog, which means it works on amperage which means current flow and voltage, which means force. So you could turn it on and check anywhere in here and, and get a voltage reading in, a, in this case, 12 volts or maybe more with the alternator on or the engine running and the alternator producing current. Um, you could also put an ammeter in series and read how many amps are going across a, a circuit at any particular point. It's different than a digital system which communicates with digital code and in those systems you don't necessarily measure amperage and voltage 
and there's a microprocessor in here in this case it would say computer or something or controller or something and it's it's sending out uh, code in the form of zeros and ones or voltage or no voltage and something reads that and interprets it so this is a very simple system we have a harness connector here and this one here says get one through nine on one side and then it has 10 through 15 on the other side this would normally say that this would be two harness connectors or it could be one harness connector and just a different representation of it. So your service manual would lay that out for you. Now you can look at each one of these things and follow the wires out and then generally see how the item is supposed to work. A fuel level sensor here. One side of this is going to ground out here. The other side of this is going to some kind of a resistance usually. which in this case is up to a fuel gauge and so as this thing moves it's changing the resistance which makes the needle on this gauge go up and down or the indicator in this case usually they're bars so that's a simple way of looking at all this I usually try to look at these before I go work on a machine so that I understand them and if there's any question of how things will work, I can look at that before I actually go out on the machine or I'll know where to look very quickly when I do work on the machine. So this is part one. We're going to look at other wiring diagrams in the future and try to get you hints on some of the stuff that uh, as they get more complicated. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully we'll do more of these in the future and uh if, if you like it, uh, please let me know. Thank you. Bye.